So we can't really discuss uh, microwave weapons and uh, why they don't work and why they probably will never work without mentioning uh, this guy here. Now this is Nikola Tesla and uh, before all the fanboys start getting on my case he is one of my uh, all time heroes. The guy was a true genius and uh, even today you know not enough people know about this guy. He's uh, really uh, faded into obscurity and became uh, ridicule in science fiction but uh, he really was a uh, genius of his time and I'm mentioning Nikola Tesla because uh, he got obsessed with the transmission of electricity and transmission in the air and the atmosphere of electricity and it doesn't work I mean even today the most you can get is to light an LED light bulb over any kind of distance at all I mean we do use it uh, you often uh, find uh, people charging up their toothbrush for instance but it's really got to be in close proximity to each other to get that power to uh, transmit through the uh, air gap and any kind of distance at all and it really doesn't work. You can get the volts but uh, you don't get any amps, any kind of power so it doesn't really work over any kind of distance but I'm also mentioning Nikola Tesla because uh, in the 1930s, in the early 1930s he started uh, to uh, mention a uh, ray gun that he uh, had uh, invented and he offered it for, to, for sale to virtually everybody so all the major nations at the time Germany, uh, England, France, uh, America uh, they were all offered this uh, you know ray gun but uh, it quickly turned out that uh, it didn't exist and it only existed in Nikola Tesla's mind now while uh, Nikola Tesla was putting out his uh, feelers for his uh, ray gun uh, idea and I do know uh, quite a few nations did put in uh, actual bids for that and uh, I do know the British government at the time was one of them this guy uh, came into the uh, picture now this this guy is uh, Sir Robert Watson uh, Watt and he wasn't the inventor of uh, radar but he took radar and uh, you know took it up to the uh, next level really uh, basically uh, a lot of countries around the same time had developed their own uh, radar systems independently but uh, what uh, Robert Watson did was to take the idea of radar put it uh, you know at multiple different stations uh, around the uh, country there particularly down south at the time in the uh, UK over from uh, Dover across to Portsmouth and uh, using all the uh, microwave radar towers together he was able to pinpoint aircraft coming uh, flying into uh, British uh, airspace at the time and without a doubt uh, it did uh, you know allow us to win the Battle of Britain yes the Spitfire was a pretty uh, awesome aircraft at the time but without radar we uh, would probably have lost that battle because what it enabled us to do was to uh, pinpoint exactly where the enemy planes were and then uh, we could fly off intercept them without using uh, as much fuel as you would just by cruising around waiting to uh, you know happen upon a uh, German aircraft so really uh, you know this is another idea that uh, is you know not really well known about to be honest with you and if you are interested in this there was a really good uh, documentary series put out by the BBC a few years ago now called Castles in the Sky and it really is worth a uh, watch just to see how he did develop it at the time. Now the idea of a uh, microwave ray gun has never really disappeared and uh, every now and again you'll see uh, something surface in the uh, press and the news and uh, this is the modern day version of a uh, ray gun if you will now this does work it uh, was built and was tested and uh, it was a, called an active denial uh, service where they could disperse large crowds uh, without using uh, anything that uh, could be lethal because uh, a lot of the things even water cannons can uh, be lethal sometimes you know if you catch somebody off balance with a water cannon uh, there has been deaths and injuries using things like that so this uh, had a lot of money 
thrown at it but uh, what the one thing is that they will not tell you in the news is uh, the first time that they tested this uh, it just would not work and the reason it would not work is because it was raining and uh, rain water is uh, a big attenuator for uh, microwave uh, frequencies it really does kill them in their steps it uh, knocks them dead and uh, basically they can't propagate in the air anymore but this is a true microwave weapon as such although it is designed just to disperse crowds and it will give you a small electric shock uh, you know quite minor but just enough to make you uncomfortable so you want to get out of the way of the uh, beam so this is my uh, test setup to show how water can seriously attenuate a microwave signal and stop it dead almost in its tracks. I've uh, got a little 2.4 gigahertz transmitter in a uh, glass uh, bauble here, sorry a plastic bauble, just to protect it so it doesn't get wet and uh, break of course. It puts out around 300 milliwatts to uh, 2.5 milliwatts of power so uh, they're not very powerful but it's powerful enough for this experiment i've got my uh, boonton uh, power meter here and the sensor connected up to this small dipole antenna that i've strapped to the side of the fish tank and uh, hopefully we'll get some power meetings you're not really supposed to use it in this fashion it's not how it's been designed to use but hopefully it'll give us a uh, power indication I've got uh, my spectrum analyzer, my cheap little uh, USB spectrum analyzer strapped to the side of the tank here and hopefully that will give us a good visual representation on here on uh, you know how the water will attenuate the signal. If something's bright red then uh, we're getting a really good signal. If it goes down to amber and you see that signal disappear then uh, you know the water is attenuating that signal. So uh, let's do a test outside of the fish tank first to give us a baseline and I'll hold it about the distance away that it's going to be inside the tank. You can see the uh, boot and power meter is uh, picking up around 25 uh, nanowatts of uh, power there so uh, you know not a great deal going on but uh, on the spectrum analyzer you can see a good visual representation there some nice thick red lines there showing that uh, we're getting a good signal from this transmitter so what i'm going to do now is pop it into the water and hopefully we'll see the uh, power meter drop away just a background and uh, those big thick red lines should also disappear from the spectrum analyzer and there you go straight away the power meter is virtually just background and we've just got a very faint amber uh, line there now on the uh, spectrum analyzer so that shows just how much uh, water can attenuate a microwave signal microwaves have serious problems uh, propagating in uh, water and uh, you know it really is a problem when it comes for something like communications on submarines for instance but uh, yes microwaves at 2.4 gigahertz will interact with water molecules but they will not propagate through those water molecules. So this is a, a typical magnetron out of a uh, microwave oven and I have used this in a few experiments here so I've burnt the antenna a little bit there but it does work and uh, these are only really designed to produce a short standing wave around 130 millimeters long or you know say a wave and a half just to fill the uh, cavity of the microwave oven now there's lots of youtube videos of people making microwave guns out of these and a lot of them are fake but uh, one mistake that a lot of people do is uh, have the magnetron mounted like that and build some kind of funnel in uh, that direction but unfortunately that's not going to work well at all because the microwaves come out of the antenna here on the magnetron and they come out looking more like this and they need a waveguide to direct them into the cavity of the microwave oven and you have a big big null just here um, you know where it doesn't really produce any microwaves at all so if you just put a funnel on this like so then really all you're going to do is cause the microwave uh, frequencies there to just 
bump into each other and cancel each other out. The way you want to mount this is on its side and you want to mount it something like this so you can have a tube here you have it as a uh, set uh, distance away from the back reflector and you mount it like this and you get a waveguide where the microwaves will come out of this end here a little bit like a cantenna and basically the maths for a cantenna are exactly the same as one of these because this operates around 2.4 gigahertz but even when you mount it like this you don't get much range out and the way I test one of these to see how much power is actually being produced is to use a fluorescent light bulb and uh, hold it into the position here and if it illuminates I'm getting a lot of microwave uh, waves coming out and that can be dangerous only to the fact that it can burn me it cannot give me cancer or anything like that but it could burn me but as long as I move my hand out of the way fast enough it's not going to cause me any damage whatsoever the thing you have to be careful about using these are your eyes because they can damage your eyes in a split second because the amount of water that you've got in your eyes it will give you cataracts and cause permanent eye damage but uh, as far as range from one of these you've got to do something a little bit special if you want to get any kind of range out of one of these and I was approached two years ago almost two years ago now by a uh, television company that were uh, putting together a documentary on microwave weapons and uh, these targeted individuals on the internet that say governments around the world are irradiating them and they asked me to build a microwave gun and uh, I came up with one it wasn't used because the show was cancelled because there was concerns they're dealing uh, with a lot of mental illness with this uh, subject so they went away and they are going to make it in the future again but they're going to have to rewrite it to uh, take that into consideration because unfortunately as well as the conspiracy theories a lot of these people that claim to be irradiated by these so-called microwave guns and a lot of them made from uh, normal household microwave oven magnetrons uh, it just doesn't happen and mental illness tends to be an underlying effect of that so this is the gun that I made for the uh, television documentary that was going to take place they asked me to give it a kind of a uh, futuristic or a uh, steampunk feel to it and this was built primarily just to show that it's uh, almost impossible to build an effective weapon out of uh, magnetrons taken from uh, household uh, you know uh, microwave ovens you just cannot do it uh, they're not designed to do that and propagation of a microwave beam to carry any kind of power just isn't possible without massive amounts of uh, electricity and power now although this has got uh, four uh, 700 watt microwave oven magnetrons on this it still only delivers uh, you know useful power if you want to actually damage some electronics or something like that uh, of about six meters so it's quite pathetic as far as a uh, weapons go I mean you're better off with a uh, uh, handmade catapult out of uh, a couple of pieces of wood and some elastic to be perfectly honest with you but uh, there is a lot of mathematics involved in design, designing this so I could get all four beams to come together in uh, a creative way rather than a destructive way and then uh, you know funnel it out into one microwave beam now I have got some footage of this uh, microwave gun working at around uh, six meters or just slightly less I think it was about five and a half meters and uh, it did take out a uh, LCD TV but uh, it only you know there was only a few pops and bangs and uh, quite a lot of smoke there was no flames or anything like that and uh, its effective range as I say is about five and a half meters so you, you can't really call it a weapon in a, a true sense now unfortunately this microwave gun no longer works it weighs uh, almost seven stone and uh, it has fallen over a few times in the uh, workshop here since I built it so I'm showing you it now because I do want to take it to pieces I'm going to salvage uh, the magnetrons out of this and I do want to build another one uh, by myself because I want to uh, teach myself how to weld and uh, unfortunately uh, the guy who I got to do the welding on this didn't really understand what he was doing and uh, a couple of the uh, waveguides aren't lined up precisely so 
I'm not getting, you'd never get 100% uh, of all four beams coming together constructively anyway. You will always have a little bit of destruction in there. But uh, because one of them is obviously a little bit wonky and not at the uh, 32 degrees that I wanted it at, uh, you know it, they're not working as efficiently as they could but I do want to build uh, another one slightly smaller one uh, that I could keep on a desktop just to uh, do some experiments with but uh, as a uh, true weapon you just cannot build a uh, weapon from magnetron source from household microwaves it's just not possible so I've got the gun set up then and it looks a little bit closer on camera but it's just under 5 metres away from the TV there and I've got the TV set up over there it's playing a file off a USB stick and uh, hopefully the uh, microwave gun will do some serious damage to the TV as I said it can be a little bit disappointing unless uh, you fake it like a lot of the YouTube videos do and the film that we're going to microwave is a film that was a major disappointment to me i'll let you work out the title but uh, i waited 20 years for the sequel and the original film i uh, actually read about it on a plane uh, journey to uh, rotterdam from uh, the hull in the uk and uh, i was intrigued by it in the magazine never heard of it before i actually went to see it in rotterdam twice and uh, it was one of my uh, all-time favorite films but the sequel was such a disappointment so i've decided we're going to nuke that today with the microwave gun. So firing in three, two, one. Oh, Telly's gone already. Fuel box. And some smoke, so that was quite dramatic. Keep it going for a few more seconds. See if we get some flames. So the microwave gun certainly made mincemeat of an LCD TV. So I hope you enjoyed uh, this uh, little intro into uh, microwave weapons, why they don't uh, really exist and why they probably will uh, never ever work. Um, there's quite a few things uh, you know I could talk about in depth on uh, microwave weapons and I'll probably do a few videos in the future with uh, a few more experiments just to show you uh, these uh, you know magnetrons in particular in operation and uh, you know experiments to show why microwaves don't uh, propagate well carrying power as a signal it propagates well but why it doesn't carry power very well over a distance so that's the reason why they probably will never work so if you did enjoy the video please give it a uh, thumbs up as always any comments drop them below and i'll do my best to answer them hope you enjoyed the video and i hope you join me on the next one